Alright, so now that we know how to solve ordinary differential equations using many different methods, we can start talking about how to solve partial differential equations. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about a very peculiar partial differential equation. Well, not peculiar, but very common one, because it is one of the ones that is used as an example in pretty much every single textbook that you come across that talks about partial differential equations. So we can write it in this form. This is a one-dimensional uh, heat equation. Or you can also write it using the shorthand notation, which is just using the subscript to mean the partial derivative. So this is the same as c squared u double x. So either of them is essentially um, is valid. So to solve uh, um, partial differential equations, we need two things. So to find the general solution, we need to essentially assume that this partial differential equation is separable. So by separable, we mean that this is actually a product of two functions. So we're going to call the first one, let's not do big X, let's do something else. Let's do psi of X and then T of time. So this is basically a function of X in terms of space and T is function of time. And then the general idea behind this is that we're going to assume that the solution to this partial differential equation is going to be a product of two functions, each of them being a function of a single variable. Now, obviously, you may imagine that not all partial differential equations are separable, so obviously this method doesn't work to all of for all of them, in the same way that not all ordinary differential equations are separable. But this allows us to essentially develop a method that is relatively easy for finding the general solution to simple partial differential equations like this one. So the method works in the, in the following way. What we're going to do is we're going to find the derivatives of this to plug into this equation and then try to uh, reduce this to a system of ordinary differential equations. So because we have two variables involved in this case, we want to have a system of two ordinary differential equations. And those should be fairly easy to solve because they're not going to be coupled. Remember, each of those is going to be a differential equation with respect to a different variable, so they should be solvable individually. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative or the partial derivative of u with respect to x. We're going to do that twice, actually. So because if we differentiate this whole function with respect to x, this one stays constant, but this one is going to be differentiated. So basically what we can do is we can write this as double prime times t. So basically this is what we're going to get from that. And then for the time derivative, we're going to have the following. This is going to remain constant, but this one is going to be differentiated with respect to time. So we can write this in shorthand notation as psi t prime. So now that we have that at hand, we can substitute for these functions into our original PDE. So this is going to be c squared, that's just a constant. And then we have this here, so that's going to be psi double prime of t. So what we're going to do now is we want to have all the uh, we have to we want to have two ratios. So we want to have uh, all the t's on one side and all the size on the other side. So we can divide this whole thing by the function itself, which is psi t. So this is going to give us t prime over t equals to c squared times psi double prime over psi. So we have separated them both. And now what we can do is we can actually write this as 1 over c squared. So we can, we're we just going to move that c from this side. And the reason for that is just convenience. We'll see that it's better to have the constant here. So now that we have these two ratios, what we're going to do is we're going to set this equal to some constant. And we often call this an eigenvalue uh, of, these two, uh, part of these two ordinary differential equations. So what this means is that we are going to be setting up an equation, or two equations, Jerry, that will allow us to solve for um, this function and this function involving this eigenvalue. So we're going to have the following. Let's have t, well, not t of t. Let's have the following two ordinary differential equations. We're going to have t equals to lambda c squared t. So that's the first one. And the second one with respect to psi, that's going to be psi double prime equals to lambda times psi. And then this one can be written as psi double prime minus lambda psi equals zero. So this one is a first order ordinary differential equation. 
this one is second order with constant coefficients because this um, eigenvalue is always going to be a constant okay so now that we have those two things what we can do is we can solve each of them individually and it is often um, a lot more convenient to solve the second order differential equation first so we will start with this one and then we will go into solving this one so in order to solve this one we have to consider three different cases because this eigenvalue we don't know whether it's negative zero or even positive it can be it can even be complex for all we for all we know so what we're going to do is we're going to consider three cases so case one is going to be when lambda equals to zero so basically that means that we're going to have the following differential equation psi double prime equals to zero and this is a very simple um, differential equation to solve because we know the only possible solution to this is going to be the following ax plus b that's the only solution that we can have for this so basically we're going to have a solution of this so it's just going to be a linear equation so ax plus b all right that's one possible solution how about the second case let's say that lambda is greater than zero let's assume lambda is greater than zero for a second so that means that our ordinary differential equation is going to become see if this is greater than zero that's positive so this stays the same this is going to stay the same and then what we're going to have is we find the characteristic equation of this so that's going to be r squared minus um, minus lambda equals to zero and then we can factorize this to find the roots that's going to be r minus square root of lambda r plus square root of lambda equals to zero and then because we have distinct and real roots we're going to have a solution of the form we're going to have a solution of the form a times e to the power of square root of lambda x plus b times e to the minus square root of lambda x so that's going to be our general solution for this case and the third case of course is going to be the following we're going to have third case it's going to be when lambda is less than zero so that means that if lambda is less than zero that's negative so negative times negative that's positive so our ordinary differential equation becomes plus lambda psi equals zero and this correct the characteristic equation to this differential equation is going to be r squared plus lambda equals to zero so now we need to factorize this so we can use a trick from complex numbers that tells us that we can factorize this as r minus i square of lambda you can use the quadratic formula as well but this is usually shorter plus i square of lambda equals to zero and because we have uh, complex roots in this case we're going to write the solution to this equation in the form a cosine of square of lambda x plus b sine square of lambda x and the reason we, we write it in this way instead of this way with complex exponentials is that we can make the simplification by making the uh, constants complex and this is something that we talk about in the differential equations playlist so if, if you need a refresher I recommend you go to s watch that video but essentially these are the three cases so these are three different solutions that we can have for this particular partial differential equation so the next step would be of course to solve to apply boundary conditions and the boundary conditions will allow us to define or basically determine which of these three possible solutions is the correct one for a particular problem so boundary conditions are essentially defined as follows so boundary conditions are always with respect to the space variables so in this case we may have something like this u at zero uh, for all time t equal or greater than zero is going to be some constant value c and then u at some other point in x and other constant point x for all values of time is going to be some other value let's call it c2 so those are what we call boundary conditions and usually you need two boundary conditions because remember that for a partial differential equation we're usually interested in solving the problem 
In this case, it's two-dimensional or essentially just one-dimensional. So we have two boundaries. So, so because we need to have boundaries in the x direction, we need two boundary conditions in order to solve this equation. If we had something like a two-dimensional equation like u, x, y, t, so it has two space variables, then we would need boundary conditions, so four of them, because we would need a boundary that confines this to the x, y plane. And similarly, for a three, uh, three space variables, we would need to have um, boundary conditions that match up the number of um, different dimensions that are involved in the problem, and so forth and so on. So that's the general idea behind this. And of course, our conditions for the time are going to be the initial conditions that we are familiar with from ordinary differential equations. So an initial condition is just going to be the condition when for all x we have time equals to zero and that's going to be equal to some value that we define. So obviously to solve these equations we need to first of all apply some boundary conditions that will, are going to tell us which of these three solutions is the most probable one and then once we have that, once we defined what the value of that lambda is, we proceed to solve this first order differential equation because remember that lambda, the value of that lambda is going to be affected by which of these three solutions we choose. So we need to solve this one first before solving this one. And after that we can apply a lot of other methods to find the particular solution if we're given enough conditions to solve for it. So in the next video we're going to be doing some examples that show you how to find which one is the correct solution based on different boundary conditions.